Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Now, I like a conspiracy theory just as much as the next person in cryptocurrency. So today we're going to look at some of the massive FUD attacks that are potentially coming to the Bitcoin market. We're going to go through some news and of course, look at the charts. Now, on top of the massive FUD that could eventuate comes opportunity and opportunity in the way of lower prices. Now, this isn't determined. This doesn't mean it's going to happen, but I just like to have a little bit of an idea of potentially what's coming, what the news is trying to generate and dish off to us. If you don't have a plan already, make sure you stick around for this video and check out the other videos on the channel looking at a fear and greed plan, which we'll look at in today's video as well. Now, by no means is it a complete plan, but it is a good start and it's held us in good stride through the periods when the market has been the most fearful. Those times when the market just dumps so hard, People are too scared, the market's going to go further, yet it rebounds from that point. So these are the times that we need to be uh, dollar cost averaging into our plans. Now, the way I like to look at it is from FUD comes some hopium. Now, if you enjoy that type of hopium, make sure you've hit that like button down below over here. It does go a long way to helping out the channel in the YouTube algorithm. Hit the subscribe button, bell notification icon, make sure you tap on those things. Also helps out the channel. Now. Let's dive in. Bitcoin has been acting almost like a stable coin. We've basically seen nothing over the last few days. And we'll look at the charts after we've gone through some of these news pieces. I want to lay some of these down side by side so that we can get this idea of this FUD piece that they're trying to pull together to hopefully dump the price so we can buy cheaper Bitcoin. Bitcoin's at 33,800. We haven't seen it do much over the last few days. Everyone's getting excited and giddy when it goes to 35 or 36 people liking it up and retweeting and then it just falls back down to 32. So I don't think much is happening until we get some solid closes on the weekly chart above 36 grand and then we have to go to our 42, 43 grand and then finally we want to get above 47, 48. It's a long way from this point, I know, but at the same time uh, we want to be certain about the bull market resuming at that point. Long way to go. Let's worry about that. Cross that bridge when it comes. For now, we're still holding our 50% levels in the total cryptocurrency market caps. Fear and greed plan. This is what we're going to look at today as well. We've hit 20 today. Yesterday was 29. So we've dropped back into extreme fear. But remember, we're looking for figures 15 or under. Now, I've said many times before, and I see some people just using that solely as a plan. I just want to make clear that it's not a complete plan. It doesn't mean that the market can't go lower than where we've been buying Bitcoin at 31 through to 37 grand. It's just looking at something to keep us in the game when the market is at its most extreme because many people just leave the market, miss the good times, wait for the market to go back above 60,000 or the previous all-time high, then they start to buy again and you've missed massive gains. It might only look like 100% from 30 grand to 60 grand. But when you do the measures from 30 grand to 120 or 60 grand to 120, they're massive and you start to compound the differences uh, if you are, well, the longer Bitcoin goes up. So the, the lower you can get it, obviously the better. And we're trying to stay with the market as long as possible. Now onto some of this FUD. We've got Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin mining hash rates. We have other things around Bitcoin being banned and also analysts predicting very low prices by the end of the year. So let's start with uh, this piece here, bigger mining difficulty drop. We've already seen one massive drop. Could we see further drops as miners continue to struggle? So obviously the miners are leaving China and they're having to go elsewhere. This basically to me reads like uh, Bitcoin mining is becoming decentralized. Imagine it's all, all the operating, all the operations are in China okay, now this company is decentralizing the operations through to Canada, UAE, the US, Iceland, Kazakhstan. So it's moving its staff. The group is planning to move its staff to different countries. So ICB group decides to close Bitcoin and Ethereum mining operations in China. Now they're moving their staff, so they're decentralizing the staff across the world. And the mining is obviously going to have to go elsewhere as well. According to an official announcement, ICB Group has decided to move its staff to new locations. Iceland, we know that there is mining over there, Bitcoin mining. We know there's mining in Kazakhstan. Don't think there's mining in UAE, but that's going to be a, an office. Canada, US, we know there's mining and different South American countries. We know that it can be mining there as well. Earlier this year, China Central Bank warned commercial banks against cryptocurrency payments. 
The chairman of the IBC Group said, we believe that while the Chinese crackdown is a temporary inconvenience, the, the diversified location of mining facilities is great news for the rest of the world. As a company headquartered in Toronto, fast-growing tech hub in North America, we will feel pretty or perfectly positioned to take advantage of these changes. So temporary inconvenience, these things take time. They're not going to be rolled out in the next few weeks. I know a lot of traders love to just trade on the hourly or the daily and think that news is going to help them in that shorter period of time. I'm seeing this as a much longer term. And if you've been following the channel, I am looking at something between a three and 12 months below the all time high. I'll probably stop saying three months because we're at three months now. But I was saying that in April, as we got 11 straight days down in April, I thought we're going to be at least beneath the all time high for at least three months at that point. Look, it's probably going to be something around six to 12 months at this point. So this is the second big piece of the FUD that we're seeing miners taking some more time to get going again. But as you can see from the companies, for them, it's just another day in the office. They just have to move and things are going to get sorted out again. Uh, they have 1,500 employees, more than 40 cities. So again, diversifying the mining facilities. Bitcoin in danger of losing 30,000 with Grayscale's big GBTC unlocking in two weeks. I talked about this yesterday on yesterday's video. So this is uh, 16,000 BTC worth of the GBTC shares. So the Grayscale has a share that investors can buy um, to uh, basically hold Bitcoin or at least replicate a similar price or a similar movement in price. Now they're unlocking another 16,000, which currently works out to be about $544 million. So half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin shares. Could this dump the price? It did in the past. Maybe this is just another layer of FUD on top of the other FUD. And if it all comes together at that right timing, then I would expect to see the markets move down. Next piece is Barclays blocks Binance payments. So I've seen this across Twitter today. Barclays has stopped UK uh, citizens transferring to Binance. So this is like another piece of the FUD. So the, the connection into crypto is being blocked. Now there's obviously many other ways to get into crypto and the world doesn't revolve around UK citizens trading crypto and that's the whole beauty about it. everything's decentralized it's all worldwide but again this is just another piece of the puzzle we know that it's not binance itself it's another piece of binance or another binance company binance markets which has the futures and the, the leverage products but still uh looking at being able to transfer money into uh, binance from your barclays bank account has become a lot more difficult and i also did a video on friday looking at uh, staking cardano people were talking about staking on binance 17 percent. that was for seven days and you could only stake about 200 ada uh, as i read in one of the comments and so it's not very much at all even though they look like great return rates uh, that's beside the point at this point but essentially there's more links here that you need to worry about when it comes to your staking pools as well. Just go with something that is going to work for you long term with less uh, worries as well. So another layer to this, banks blocking payments to cryptocurrency exchanges. And we have that in Australia as well. I know with a couple of the exchanges, when you open up, they advise you don't put the words Bitcoin or crypto on your payment transfer. So think about that if you're ever doing transfers from your bank to your cryptocurrency exchange. We do polls on Twitter. They do polls with big financial analysts, CNBC style. So we've got where will Bitcoin be by the end of the year? CNBC quarterly survey. Below 30,000, nearly half of them thought that. Below 40,000, another 25% below 50,000, 25% and uh, 60,000, 6%. So we don't have too many people thinking we're going to be at all-time highs by the end of this year, but we do have a lot of people that think we'll be at least beneath 40,000 by the end of the year. Is that true? Is it actually going to happen? No one knows. No one knows at all. But when people see this from, say, a big news outlet, looking at uh, financial analysts from big companies, and then they're all saying that there's a low price and you could skew this, this data to say it's like, what, 70% of people think that the price of Bitcoin is going to be under $40,000. Then you can start to see how they can work the numbers to be another piece of FUD in the FUD pie. So we're getting a pretty decent pie going on here. On top of that, JP Morgan predicts when Bitcoin bear market will be over. So this is a couple of days old, but I'm just adding all of the pieces together. JP Morgan Bitcoin market predictions, again, it's the same sort of thing. We think we're going to see a lower Bitcoin price. 
and this is going to affect the whole market. Interestingly, JP Morgan is actually using the Bitcoin dominance, which we obviously look at a lot on the chart to identify whether it's a good time to be buying into altcoins or remaining in Bitcoin. JP Morgan has predicted that the Bitcoin price slump will likely be over when the cryptocurrency's dominance rises back above 50%. So it's like all the money's gone into Bitcoin at the beginning of the cycle, then it fades out into the altcoins, into smaller, uh, crappier coins. As they pump, Bitcoin drops in dominance, and now we've got to pump Bitcoin back up. So all of the money has to leave those altcoins, pump Bitcoin back up, because that's the strength of the market. Not me just saying this, it's the way it is currently in the data, and that's the way we see it on the charts. And once we get to that point, then it looks like you know we start our next leg of the journey, into a prolonged Bitcoin bull market. So an extending cycle here. So that's my FUD pie going on. Now, is there any good news here? I think there's a lot of good news. Their clients still want to have some exposure. As we say here, JP Morgan clients want exposure to the cryptocurrency. We have George Soros, regardless of what you think of him and his doings over his career, uh, they found their fund is reportedly greenlit to trade Bitcoin. So we don't have an exact word on that, but we've got more funds looking to trade it. We've also got 4,000 institutional funds in Germany can now invest 20% of portfolios in cryptocurrency. So that's pretty massive. Almost 2 trillion in euros in assets under management in Germany can now invest 20% of their portfolios. Doesn't mean 20% of 2 trillion is going to go into cryptocurrency, but that's their their max that they could put into cryptocurrency. So there's a lot of room for fresh money to come into the space. I definitely think they're going to be putting some more money into this. Get that FUD pie organized, dump the market, then start putting some money into the market. We also have Coinbase continuing to build. So they got, they're giving $1,000 to new recruits and obviously there's more uh, exchanges that are looking to do this as well. So Coinbase is expanding aggressively with the latest target being India, where it's enticing new employees with $1,000 when they join. That's a lot of rupees. So if we still have big companies expanding, growing, building, they don't think the market's over. Yes, they did that through 2018, 19 and 20. They were still building and growing then. That's just long-term growth. And that's what happens. We have really massive run-ups in markets. They spike out. Progress keeps going. Progress doesn't generally spike and then retreat. It has to just keep growing and it grows steadily. And so we just have this big wave of up, big wave down, big wave up, big wave down, while everyone else is speculating on the price. I still see a lot of growth coming for the markets. Now, what would this look like on a chart? We continue to play around at 50%. This is on Bitcoin. I've got a couple of purple boxes here. This is at the old all-time high, so between around 20 grand and the lows of 28, 29 grand. There's a little bit of a vacuum in here that I think the market's looking to get into. Then we've got a little piece here through the middle where the market did hold up between 22-ish and 24 grand. So whether we get some sort of move to that point, so I'm not saying straight down, but maybe a bounce from those levels, time will tell, but at least we have some identification here of a potential support zone and anything beneath that would probably give us a pretty high reading on the fear index which would allow us more opportunity to be buying into bitcoin under thirty thousand dollars so hopefully by the time we average out this position and the market starts to take off again maybe we'll have some sort of position in the twenty thousand dollar bitcoin that was a long way off just a few months ago when bitcoin was trading between fifty and sixty five thousand dollars this was the time that Bitcoin was supposedly going to $80,000. If you've only just joined the market, that was the sentiment through this period. Bitcoin should be going to $80,000. Be really careful when that sort of information comes up again, because generally it's the end of the market. And that's pretty much what had happened then. Everyone's calling for massive numbers. We should be going up. Didn't happen. Be very careful at those peaks of the market. So just be aware that it happens at both extremes of the market and it's a good sign to play, uh, to, to understand and to acknowledge that it actually happens. We're going to continue to follow the markets here. There are some strong altcoins, which I'm liking the look of. And again, we're going to track them. Things like Cardano and Ethereum. Now, if you're looking for a staking pool, check out the Investor Accelerator staking pool. Link to that. It's down below in the description with a tutorial video on how to stake your Cardano in the Investor Accelerator staking pool. That's my look on the FUD, the potential massive FUD pie coming for 
cryptocurrency and of course Bitcoin in, in particular here. Let's stay tuned for that, see what the news continues to throw out at us and try to get us to work to their own agenda. We'll keep following the charts as well. Make sure you're subscribed, bell notification icon, you've hit the like button, do all that good stuff down there. Follow me on Instagram, daily Q&As. We're over there today. Make sure you're over there, follow and ask your questions. Twitter, lots of news coming out of there, plus I'm posting charts, which is much easier to get to you guys quicker over on Twitter as well. The Investor Accelerator Lite is live. Go and check it out below. A huge discount for the first 500 so make sure you're looking at that down below in the description i'll see you guys at the next video i hope you found some value from it until next time have more fun to get more done